This is the Criterion Creeps Podcast, and tonight we're talking about Heaven Can Wait from 1943, directed by Ernst the Touch Lubitsch. The tagline for this film, RJ, Mm -hmm. he believed in love, honor, and obey. That impulse... What impulse? The, Wait, what is he? T- what? Think, Which well, impulse? His, his horny impulse. Well, he is pretty. Yeah. Like that. That uh, that's all this movie is about is how horny he is. But okay. And a synopsis from Letterboxd. Uh huh. Joe Pendleton is a quarterback preparing to lead his team to the Super Bowl when he is almost killed in an accident. An over anxious um, angel plucks him to what? Wait, wait. Um, is it uh, quarterback? Oh, I'm sorry. That's Warren Beatty's "Heaven Can Wait" from 1978, which is in no way related to "Heaven Can Wait" from 1943. Well, why would they do that? Because but... why would Warren Beatty do that to us? Well, you have to ask him. You have to ask Dick Tracy. I will ask him next time I talk to him. I'm gonna call him and say, "Hey, War. War. What was the deal with this? Yeah. Why? Why did you uh, waste in our time?" That son of a bitch. Spoiled playboy Henry Van Cleve dies and arrives at the entrance to hell. A final destination he is sure he deserves after living a life of profligacy. A life of what? Sorry? Profligacy. Uh, I, I'm unfamiliar with such term. The, profligacy? <laughs> the devil, however, isn't so sure. Henry meets hell standards. Convinced he is where he belongs, Henry recounts his life's deeds, both good and bad, including an act of indiscretion during his 25-year marriage to his wife, Martha, with the hope that his excellency will arrive at the proper judgment. Uh, accurate, I suppose, to a degree. To, to a degree. doesn't mention the horniness. It doesn't, but, uh, I mean, that's evident in itself. You see that guy and you go, wow. wow. So this is a movie I'd never seen before. Mm -hmm. Much like all Ernst Lubitsch movies, um, Mm -hmm. as I watch them in this Criterion Creeping thing, these will be the first times I've seen his movies. But as everyone knows, once you say Ernst Lubitsch, someone, somewhere goes, you mean the Lubitsch touch? The boobitch touch. Have we have we found out what that uh, what what that means to you yet? It means run. When you hear the boobitch touch, you run. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's cool. right. So yeah, I, I was unfamiliar with this. Uh, it's got one of those titles. Heaven can wait. You go. Oh, is this like um? Oh, what's his name? <laughs> the very technicolory looking movies, like Far from Heaven style titles. Uh, like uh, Douglas Sirk, like Douglas Sirk, the wind. D- Doug- yes, yeah. Th- that's what Heaven Can Wait sounds like. You look at the yeah, poster, you go, "Oh boy, it's gonna be one of those melodramas." But it, um, but it ain't RJ. It seems like it will be. It is a comedy about Heaven Can Wait. I'm not sure what that means in the context of the film. But um, uh, well, heaven can wait because he's got to tell his story. Jared. It is based on a play called Birthday. Birthday is less appealing. I know that the birthday is like the the chapter marks for this movie, but if this movie was called Birthday, it wouldn't be in the Criterion Collection. Mm-hmm. I'm saying it. I'm calling it right You're now. Calling it right now. No one would give a mm-hmm. crap. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one cares it regardless. But that's the truth. So. I uh, I got pretty excited right off the hop with this movie because we have this old man, young man in old man makeup, mm-hmm. um, and he's arriving. I, I, I kind of just had read the synopsis of this really quickly before this started, watching it on YouTube because it is not on the Criterion channel. Annoying. Uh, uh, yes. But the quality was fine. It was okay on the, on the YouTube. And um, he's walking down this, like, red-walled staircase and you're like oh it's the bad place and it's of course the uh, understated um kind of hell where it's like oh it's just like a it's like a hotel room foyer that's really Bobby. really large yeah yeah and uh why it's laird krieger is the devil 
And I was like, holy shit, I love me some Laird Krieger. Could you uh, give me an example of another Laird Krieger? So, Laird, so RJ, because of January. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Uh, this is a guy that pops up in those, and he's often a highlight. He's he, Jan- January. Yeah, he shows up in like a handful of these, and he's always like he's a good, big bodied man, <laughs> um, and he's got a very like resonant voice. I don't know. It's hard to place like what exactly differentiates him from other uh, big men of his time, but he's a, mm-hmm. he's huge. I mean, we're talking Jonathan Frakes big. He is an enormous man. Yeah. And like enormous. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, like some of his uh other highlights of his is like this gun for hire, hangover square, I wake up screaming, all really good. And yeah, he wasn't he did he died pretty young. So because he was 20, 30, like not thirty nine. He was thirty nine when he died. Did he die of like the Michael Clark Duncan thing? Like his heart was too big? Yes. He gave too I'm, much. I'm he, guessing. He gave too much. Well, like, wasn't Michael Clark Duncan's heart, like, literally too big and it couldn't, like, su- or, like, his body couldn't support it or well, something? I don't, I don't know if it was quite like that. Uh... That That's the that's the medical terminology, Jared. Yeah. Like, I'm just using the proper, the proper English here, friend. So. I see. Heart was too big. Let's, uh, let's just all agree that that's the way it is. Yeah. My man, I'm trying, I'm trying to even see what his uh, cause of his death was. the The crash. Oh, he he went on a crash diet. And apparently, placed a strain mm. on his system, resulting in severe ab- abdominal problems. He underwent surgery. Uh, he was like gonna, paleo? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> he had a heart attack and died. Oh, well, that's that's no good. Oh fuck yeah! No fuck, he wasn't even thirty. He was thirty one. That's pretty young, man. Yeah. Cause you're you're like what sixty two, so you you've lived twice as long as he has. <laughs> exactly, that's crazy. Poor Laird, man, that's too bad for him. He was a big dude, and big uh, dudes are cool. Big 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 dudes are cool. So are uh, cool. so we have Henry Van Gleeve, who's like, oh yes, I lived a very bad life. Oh, I did so many bad things. Just take a look at my report. You can see <laughs> how bad I am. Uh, this like old lady comes in, and she's like, of course, a little bit more of a, a busybody. Yeah, and, and they have a, a brief little chat of like, "Hey, remember those parties we used to have? Oh, look at the legs on you, <laughs> being all flirtatious." And just as mm-hmm. she's about to say something, uh, the devil he just hits a button and the floor <laughs> comes up from under her, and she just drops right down into hell. Which I thought was very fun. Yeah, I was like, "That's cool. I like very that. nice." So yeah, this is one of those. Um, if you want to talk about the Lubitsch touch, RJ, I think one of the <sighs> things you would you would talk about would be the dialogue. Uh, this movie mm-hmm. has a very different feel to the writing. Um, it's very much about like never taking itself too seriously. Everybody's kind of always deflating one another, but mm-hmm. in the nicest way possible. Every, everybody's yeah, having a little bit polite. of fun, except for uh, cousin. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, well that guy is a complete fucking <laughs> Albert. Nerd. Al- yeah, Albert. What a Melvin. What a am Mel- I right? What a Melvin. Yeah. That's how he seemed to me. I was like, ugh. ugh. I think that, I think that's the idea, though. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't have anything against that guy personally, but no. uh, the character, you're just like, ugh, what a nerd. No, get so, out of here. So, of course, uh, uh, old Henry, he starts to explain his entire life, and like, oh, a lot of my, one of my contentions always came with women. Mm-hmm. And so, he, when he was a little baby, his his mother and grandmother fought over him. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, dear, dear, dear. And then um, he gets taken out for, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a basket or whatever, out on mm-hmm. the, out on the town with the the nanny. And she's like, oh, the nanny would pay attention to me, but then some hunky man would come along, and then she would ignore me. And I think the, the woman calls her like, shut up, you horrible little thing, or something like that, which is hilarious because like, yeah, you can say mean things to kids; they don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. Uh... Do kids know anything? No. Would you say? No, they pick up on some things here and there, I suppose. Oh, but this, this is like this yeah. is a little baby, a little, little mush. Yeah, it's a little baby. A little mush brain. Yeah, well, ooh, 
Oh, Jareth, you might get canceled for a language like that. And then, and then uh, we we time leap again to uh, another interaction that uh, Henry has with uh, a young lady, a, a girl that he's trying to like get her attentions, and she's giving mm-hmm. him the like, I don't, I, I don't know. It's like the t- total trope of the little girl in these movies who's like a little snot, but it's like as soon as you give her like a beetle, she's like, oh, I'll be your friend. And she's like, oh, you got two beetles? Wow, you know. A beetle shouldn't be alone, so you should give me that one, too. He's like, okay. Would you give up your beetle? Fuck no. Do you remember Beetle Borgs, that TV show? <laughs> Vaguely. <laughs> it was kind of like Power Rangers, but there, but it was kind of centered around a haunted house with, like, a purple guy, and he gave the Beetle Borgs their power. <clears throat> that, uh, that's it for me today and uh, that's hey, about all I have do to we, offer do we ever know what the Van Cleef family does for a living or are they just philanthropists yes th- but that means giving money away <laughs> so it's like what's their in- what's their industry well I mean we do know that the the ladies family is big beef oh yeah yeah oh yeah 100% we know it's about uh, Mabel yeah, so we know that, but uh, I don't know. I don't think they ever mentioned the the Van Cleef thing. Like, if they do, I missed it. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's beside the point. Well, I mean, n- yeah, none of them. It never shows them working or anything. It's just, hey, they're wealthy. Let's check out the crazy stuff they get into. The lifestyles of the rich and the yeah. famous, Jared. Yeah, we get a little uh, taste of uh, his parents. Um, was it? Uh, Rudolph and Bertha, <laughs> and they're kind of like, yeah, you know, very like, I don't even know what you'd call them exactly, parents, but like overbearingly, like a very pretentious types. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's just the way they were, right? Yeah, right. I mean, like rich, highfalutin people back then. That's just what they were like. Yes, stiff upper lip and all that, which I believe he even. Uh, the dad even says at one point or another, but they're like mm-hmm. very like ineffectual parents. Like they let other people take care of situations. They don't want to engage. They just assume, well, we're rich. You should just behave like us at all given points. But mm-hmm. like, I mean, does he do anything that is outside of the ordinary for a privileged kid? Uh, well, well he gets money whenever he wants. Well, and then he, I yeah. think, I think it's just implied that he goes out every night. Yeah. He's 20, like, he's 26 yeah. years old going on 45. Yes. And uh, I think, yeah, I think it's mostly just like hanging out like, with like, those showgirls. He's, he's got no job. He's just going to the nightclubs. Scary. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's it. And that's it. That's all I got from. It. And then, oh, and of course, uh, as, as he's growing up, he's also growing along parallel to his cousin Albert, mm-hmm. who like may or may not live in the house. He just kind of comes and goes as he pleases. But he does everything right because he's a little Poindexter. Uh, well, yeah, and he's a he's a little suck up too. Yeah, he's like, did you guys know that this guy had a a beer tonight? And then you've got uh, uh the grandpa Hugo, uh, played by mm-hmm. Charles Coburn, who's like probably one of the more endearing characters mm-hmm. of the movie. He's yeah, a, you... he's a bit more of a gruff. Uh, straight shooter type yeah yeah and i mean uh, he sees the he sees the good behind the trouble that's right well he's i think uh one of the things that jumps out at me because it seems like i watched this movie five days ago and like i've watched so many movies since Mm -hmm. uh that it's kind of a blur but the bit where uh, we're introduced to gene tierney the, the the romantic interest for uh Henry, uh, she's at the time engaged to Cousin Albert, and uh, Hugo's like, oh, if I was 50 years younger, I'd uh, I'd take you away from this great great grandson of mine, or whatever it is. And you go, hmm, I don't think that's what he was going to say. But it's good. It's it's the Lubitsch touch, RJ. (laughs) Where where would he take her, Jared? (laughs) He'd take her. But where? Uh, Pound Town. <laughs> you asked. You asked. I mean, you, I, I mean, I you, asked. You didn't have to. You do it to yourself. You do it to yourself. I, untrue. But no. continue. No. But of course, yeah. uh, Henry sees her, and he's like, 
Nawuga. Oh my god, this is the girl I saw earlier. Oh. I, I, I spied her at the department store and she was lying to her own mother. My word, my word, my word. And then I followed her like a stalker because it's 1940s America and men just did this in movies and probably in real life. And then they like pretend to work at the store that she's trying to buy a book from. Uh, not creepy at all. And then mm-hmm. like like it's lying to her and manipulating her. And then, then he says, you should like drop your, your fiance and marry me. She's like, what the fuck? I don't work here, but I would, I would follow you anywhere. What, what, what would we call a guy like this, Jared? Well, um, cr- a creep. I would call him a creep. A criterion creep? Yeah, he is. He is now. He is now a criterion creep. So anyway, she's but, like, no, I won't even buy this book about how to be a good wife to my husband. Well, he's like, you don't need this book. You're he's every, like, you're just be yourself. You're baby. everything a man would ever need. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I mean, she was just trying to do what she thought was the right thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like scald her for that, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe the book would have helped her. I don't know yeah. if that's so, what she wanted. Maybe, yeah. Uh, so just, she is, um, she's she belongs to the Strabel family, Strabbles, uh, mm-hmm. which have a cow named Mabel. Because uh, they're they're mm-hmm. Big B from Kansas City, Big B, and it's the one guy from I want to say Lady Eve. I think shows up in this again. The fat guy, yeah, the fat guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a cool dude. I like that fat guy, Eugene Pallet. <laughs> that sounds like a name of fat guy. Oh no, have. yeah, actually, no. It, it was uh, My Man Godfrey, your favorite movie, which is also you know, uh, similar in uh, theme. Yeah, about rich rich blokes. Yeah, you lifestyles of the rich and the famous, Jared. Yep. No. They always complaining. Ooh, he was fri- always, he, he no. was he was Friar Tuck uh, in the Adventures of Robin Hood. No, he wasn't. He'd be a because he's got that voice like this. Yes. He he actually is I, I actually think he's a super cool dude. So I know, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's he was great in uh, My Man Godfrey and he's great here too. Um, and tra- yeah, I like that Charles Coburn as well. Actually, because I kind of thought Charles Coburn was a different. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize he was a different person from another actor. I kept thinking, oh, is this that guy? But uh, like not, the but other it, Charles. Coburn? Yeah, the other Charles Coburn. Yeah, the, the other one. The, the father of James Coburn. No, he's not. Um, is James Coburn? Yes, I. Yes, okay. No, no I answered my own question. You're good. I got it. It's, I got her. So anyway, there's a, a little bit of forcing the issue um, from old uh, Henry. What, he, what do you mean? He's making some. He's making some moves. He's cornering this this uh, fiance Martha in the study because oh, she's dang. she can't stop sneezing during the performance of what is it, Mrs. Ms. Cooper Cooper, this singer woman. Because uh, that's what you do in olden times. You uh, gather around and listen to people sing in rich people's to homes. To each other. And you go, yeah. yes, indeed, yes. But uh, Henry's like, I, I've never wanted anything more in my life. And they, he, he again, he works through the no. He he does, in fact, work through the no. Yeah. He, Aggressively. Because, so. because, because it turns out she did want it, RJ. Well, does that make it? Right, Jared? Are you, well, are you, you know, saying some, that? Some people just have a sense of like, you know, you might be saying no, but I know better. Your eye, uh, your your mouth says no. It's so weird. It's just a coincidence. It always is in these movies that have a, a predetermined conclusion, and people go, "Oh, that's what my life's going to be too." I just got to, I just got to not take no for an answer. <laughs> and they say it's almost like it was meant to be. Look how it worked out. They were in love with each other. She didn't know it, but he or, did. Or she, but she did want it all along. Yeah, she might not have had. I, I, I admitted it, but like, look at how it worked out, Jared. Yeah. So she gives a big tearful speech about how she doesn't want to die in Kansas. Uh, yeah. I mean, I get it. She, she wants to live in New York City. Even Clark Kent left Kansas. You know. Smallville? Yeah, he left. No. He didn't even stay around, so how could she be expected? To? I mean, as we know, middle America, hell on earth. I think uh, some of our listeners from um, Delaware are going to have a real issue with that, Jared. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
yeah, one thing leads to another, and Henry and Martha elope with a little bit of a sneeze, and Albert's left there being sad. Mm. Yeah, he's a mopey bitch. Yeah, for a while. He's, he's trying to tell them, oh, don't worry, don't worry about me. No, I'll be okay. And you're like, man, everybody here, everyone, everything's going to work out just fine for everybody. Because that's one thing you could say mm-hmm. about this movie is I don't know if there's really that much conflict, <laughs> like at all. Mm. It, they attempt to, cre- to create conflict that she might leave because she catches him in some uh, f- infidelitous acts. Well, but, she, uh, he, uh, she, yeah, she finds some receipts. She finds some receipts, and I actually thought she was a little bit, uh, a little hasty on her uh, upping and leaving altogether. But I guess like it was all the, it was coming all the whole time. Yeah, like uh, w- when I was watching, I was like, maybe he was gonna give it to her, but then. Uh, uh, and then I was like, oh, but, but they, he's they trying. Yeah, he's making a case that he is. Uh, yeah, a shit. So, but they don't make. They don't really make that clear though either. But I mean, so anyway, no, there, there's there's there, there's a time jump, ten years into the future. But <laughs> and and they have they have a child, a, a boy. Uh huh. He's a real stinker. Oh, just like dad. Yeah, he's gonna be just like dad one day. And but Martha's run off. And he's like, where is he gone? I don't know. I don't know where she is. But she's trying to go back home because after getting disowned 10 years earlier, we were like, she's cut off from the money. She's not going to get the dime. She's um, not getting a dime from me. And uh, you're talking about the breakfast scene? Yeah. And then, of course, the yeah. And then of course the other family is like, oh, well, it's preposterous. We will never back this. And it's like, no, nah, everything works out fine. He's still living in the family house. Everyone forgives mm-hmm. it. It doesn't matter. You're like, oh, there's no repercussions for any of the decisions they've made. And nope. then, like, they're all, like, kind of bored rich people. It's, like, interesting. I do think that, I mean, I liked, I do like this movie. I think it's a, it was a very mm-hmm. enjoyable movie to watch. But mm-hmm. on the, the values of this movie, kind of the... Um, a little questionable? Well, it's just, like, this is the type of movie that I feel like Republicans watch and go, these were the good old days. <laughs> I, I agree. The, the, I the, agree the, 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 a certain like little like I can imagine uh you know a Mitch McConnell being like oh it's just like my life <laughs> that's just what I wanted to be like <laughs> I wanted to be like I, heaven can wait where I go to hell too when I die oh everything's gonna work out just fine <laughs> and you're just like oh <laughs> like I don't want every time that because that crossed my mind a lot while watching this like people I don't like probably like this movie. But they've yes. based their values around this type of world, and mm-hmm. it's like, ugh. I'm like, this is just a movie, and for the rest of us, life kind of stinks. There's a lot of problems here, and this movie's like, ah, eh, we don't care about that kind of thing. This is about escape, escape from those things. It's like, well, there is no escape when you leave the theater because there's people who watch this and they escape right into the, like this world. I don't know. Yeah, where where nothing matters and they can do things that. Uh... Yeah. You know, without consequence. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the, I guess you could say, a criticism you could lob at this is there is no consequences oh, yeah. to any actions of anybody. Um, and then everybody gets older. Uh, Sonny Boy is like kind of like a, a little jerkwad with his mustache now, too. His d- d- dad's getting older. He's not getting any less silly. But now he's like, his son's got a taste. He's got a taste for the showgirls, too. And uh, he goes mm-hmm. and pays 25 Gs to keep her away from him. But it's already too late. So she just fleeced that guy for money. But you're like, he just gave away $25,000 in like 1920 bucks. That's like, that's a, that's a fucking fortune. <laughs> yeah. What, what would the conversion rate be? Like oh, for, $600,000? Oh, like at least like it would be a, it's a lot. That's eight yeah. billion dollars. Eight billion. Wait, I I always think back to like uh, when I was watching Mad Men, uh, and there's like the salary for like a ad exec at that time was something like oh it's like oh I'm making thirty five hundred dollars a year, <laughs> like uh and that's like 1959, 1960 or something like that. And they're like, these guys are excited about like making you know four thousand dollars a year. I mean, I, I would be happy with that if you could if it, if you could make that work because everything costs that much less. Yeah, mm-hmm. because our, our our dollar is not worth very much. So twenty five k to a to a a showgirl floozy. 
that that apparently of course that's like but you go oh that's my conflict and like it doesn't even like make it like oh we can't even go yachting this year we have to sell the yacht it's like nah i just look like a fool and you're like oh my god <laughs> like come on is anything I, um, is, is anything going to happen to these people so just speaking of that there is a a guy that i work with in the workroom the other day Talk, just complaining about general things, you know. Ah, oh, COVID is driving prices up on things. Ah, uh, the gas prices are high, and uh, I heard him drop a. You know, pretty soon I'm not gonna be uh, not gonna be buying gas for my boat anymore if gas keeps going up. And I, I just kind of turned my head. I was like, <laughs> I was like, you piece of shit, get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? Fucking gas for your boat, get out of here. But it's a, it's the same same kind of idea, right? In a sense, that's right. Oh, hey, on on Wikipedia, they actually do yeah. have they have an inflation of like they don't even cite this. Uh, it, it'd be equivalent of yeah, th- uh, three hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars today. Pretty good chunk of change. Um, yeah, I mean that's like, hey, would you like five years' wages for many people? Like right now? Yeah, I would. Would you like that? Yes, please. I mean, I would take it if you were offering. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't yeah. you don't want, you don't want to be scandalized. Well, here's the thing, Jared. Money. What, what do you think about uh the ridiculous wig and aging uh here in this movie? Cuz we I got, didn't mind it. So we have Jean Tierney though. Her hair, her old lady mm-hmm. hair they start putting on her is so bad. It's it, it's <laughs> come on. I uh I didn't mind it. I I was like, eh. I was like, I don't know. The other movies I'm watching right now have even more questionable uh, makeup. So I was like, well, eh, whatever. Yeah. And then we get a little bit of uh, up sort of stuff where Martha dies. She mm-hmm. passes away. And now uh, Henry's sad. And there's a very nice little touching thing where they're dancing. He's like, and you're because you know, oh, she went to the doctor and she keeps telling me it's no big deal. So you know, four months later, she wanted to make me the happiest man I could ever be before she died. And it was, those were the best years of our lives. And then she died. And now I'm still... But then he goes back to being zany afterwards some years later. And his son's getting more and more like himself at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, why? He's always out at night. Uh, caterwauling. <laughs> yeah. No, I actually... Um... So when that stuff was going on, that dance scene where they're dancing away from all the public uh, or if, like from the crowd, I was like, to me, Jarrett, maybe that is the Lubitsch touch. That is the Lubitsch touch. In in my world, that was the Lubitsch touch where I went, hey, that's a nice little scene. Mm-hmm. Is this what people are talking about when they're talking about uh, the Lubitsch touch? I don't know. <laughs> but in my world, I'm going to say that that's it. No. Nope. You know, so. So. Then and then, he, and then she dies. Yeah, and he's alone. He's alone, and he's like kind of feeling shitty about it, and alone, and like, oh, what's the what's the point? Mm-hmm. But then, it's like a Fred Olin Ray movie. Oh, go on. He he dies under the care of a beautiful nurse. Va va voom. And like, is the implication there that he had like? unpure thoughts and he's like yeah i'm a bad man yeah he got horny at the end and died and was it the horniness that killed him is that why he felt like he deserved to be in hell i don't know i like, i'm not sure like what he thought was so bad other than like oh yeah i live a shitty life I, I should deserve to go to hell you're like i don't get i don't get this i don't i don't make this leap that this guy's convinced of he's not that good of a guy no, he's not a great dude. Like he's he definitely dicked around a lot, but at the same time it's like it's like what do you mean you were you you think you should be in hell here? It's like cuz well, and this cause is cuz you didn't do good stuff or Right. And so this is the kind of thing that I think of like, huh? So like these like horrid politicians that exist in the world that like do really bad mm. things. Do they think, well, I didn't really do anything that bad because we're getting – but they have like a uh, heaven can wait view where everything's based on how they treated women. 
and they and they're like, oh, I didn't yeah. treat them. I didn't treat them that bad. So I'm I deserve to go and have like, what about all the shitty things you didn't do or the bad things you did do that you don't think were bad? Because that's the thing that I'm like, is there something we're missing from the picture of Henry Van Cleve? Because we don't really see his interactions of bettering the world or like being this philanthropist other than I am a philanthropist. It's like, what does that mean? I give guns to kids in school. I'm a good guy. <laughs> like, I do many like, great things for yeah. many people. Yeah, it's like this guy could be horrible, but that's not what it's about. It's 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 just about feel it's a nice little movie, it's a nice little romp with uh like, you know, good acting, some comedic bits, uh nice dialogue. Like that's all it is. But good wholesome family values, is that what you're talking about? Wholesome, about getting loaded and getting your, your funk on. Could you repeat that? What do you mean getting your funk on? So then RJ, he dies. Yeah. And that's where he winds up going into hell. Because that's where he thinks he belongs. But what does his excellency say? He says, well. You don't belong here at all. He says, why don't you just try to go up to the big house? He you, says, you know, they you might not get in. You might have to you have, might have to wait. You might have to wait. But they do have a side area for the people who A small room. Yeah, that aren't bad, but uh, you know, maybe maybe one day you'll get you there. You might have and, to wait a hundred years, but uh, it might happen in years. And he says, "You know what? Heaven can wait." And then he looks at the camera and goes, "Wink." And then everyone laughs. Bottles are popped, and and he, uh, and he goes up the elevator. And uh, everything's fine after. Oh, that. yeah. So okay. So that's the gist of the story. Um, one fun th- thing in this movie is like, oh hey, look, look at these uh, the help mm-hmm. on on display of the the uh, the, 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 the Strable family. Yeah, I I I have some questionable thoughts about the breakfast <laughs> you, scene like and the, uh, Jasper, the treatment of uh, J- Jasper indentured servants. Yeah, and there is also um, there's like the the quote unquote mammy. That like she's she's just kind of round for a little bit, but yeah, it's yeah. mostly Jas Jasper. It's Jasper. Jasper's the one who takes the the brunt of uh, or the blunt of all of yeah. this stuff, and uh, I feel bad for Jasper. You I'm go, not gonna lie to you. You go, oh dear, what, how's this going to go? It could have been worse, but it's kind of like it was uh, things like well, you know, it's 1943. You're like, holy shit, World War II is going on right now. <laughs> like that's you're like that's not that like in the, you're like only like World War II is not that far off it's gonna be even like the civil war wasn't that long ago (laughs) i mean not that long ago but i think it's it's not as much the thing with jasper that really bothered me even more more that they're just treating this guy like a piece of shit and that he's clearly like he has to be there i'm 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 guessing You, you, you can't treat you shouldn't be treating employees this way well, I, I believe Jared, is this is this an example of indentured servitude? Is that is that what's going on here? In in a sense where it's you live for us but you do what and you can live here but you do what we say. Like do you think he was getting a salary? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, at that point you uh, in Kansas City. Uh yeah, a couple I, pennies. But it's like but that old family. I would make sure I take care yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the thing that stood out for me the most in that scene, other than the fact that the lady was eating pork chops for breakfast, which I feel like is a big power move, um, was that it wasn't even like the the like it, it just shows how shitty rich people are just in general. <laughs> what- and you're just like fuck i don't care about these it's like it's supposed to be very comical where it's like hey they're they're arguing about the funny papers they're arguing about heathcliff how'd that cat get out of that cage how could that happen but they're using this man Jarrett. they're using this man to do this and you go man these people fucking suck yeah like why would they treat this guy like this and like i know this was an old movie, and that is how mm. people were treated. But at the yep. same time, you're just like, and, and this, this is, and, 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 and this was the nice way that people would have been treated, because this yeah. is like the cinematic version for for laughs. Yeah, well, and that's what I mean. Like, I think it's 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 played like it's supposed to be. Like, uh, it's like this is fun. Look at how much fun they're having. But then you're just like, these these people suck. They're just <laughs> shit. They're just shit people, Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Just shit. Well, anyways, so yeah, the dinner or breakfast scenes sucks for that reason, just because but you're like. How about those cakes? He wasn't even putting fucking syrup on them. 
What kind of, he he what does kind of, in, he does at one one moment. He well, he started but, cutting uh, he started cutting into those things. Yeah, with, and without, then he does slap. a little drizzle, and then he 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 puts his syrup knife in the butter, which I was like, mm mm, can't be cross contaminating that shit. It's like that's butter one oh one, baby. You got to get the butter first hey. when the knife is clean. Hey, it was like 1943 by, but it's like supposed to be like whatever 1919. So it's like World War yeah. One era. Like you can do whatever you want with that butter. I know you could, but yeah. Well, so he's eating the the cakes, but it's like I said, girlfriend's eating pork chops in the morning, and I went, damn. Because you want pork chops, you get pork chops. That's a meat house. That's a house that meat built. Yeah, but you know, pork though. I mean, they were they were the big they were cow cow producers, and it's mm-hmm. like well, eating pork. You should have some fucking hamburgers for breakfast if that's how you want to play it. They, they got deals. They got they had handshakes. You can't eat. You can't just eat beef all day. Yeah, I mean. That's part of it as well. That's right. But uh, yeah, the the breakfast scene I think is supposed to be very playful, but it, it comes off. Um, uh, you, you're just like these people aren't very likable. So these these rich people and their games that they play, Jarrett. The riches. The riches. Uh, but that's the end of the movie. Well, not that scene, but yeah. we we've discussed the movie. So uh, I'm. Um, what else do you think? I don't know. Uh, what do you think about this movie, RJ? Uh, I agree with you. I think it's good. Uh, I did. I think it's very cute is the only word I can think of to describe it. Like when, when it was, when I, f- I didn't really look into it. And then about 10 minutes in when I, when I got what the movie was about, I was like, oh, that's cute. So this guy's trying to convince the devil he belongs in hell. How playful. Um, I do like the setup with the, uh, dropping that lady down the floor. I just thought that was funny. Yep. I was like, I like that. It's a good little bit. Um, it's a bit terrifying too. <laughs> yeah, it no, is. It's good. Uh, but it's a good, they had a, they had a great guy playing the role. So uh, that bit is good. The childhood days. I think it's good that they kind of gloss through that fast. You get that out of the way. Um, like, I think, I do. Oh, we missed the bit where, uh, or I missed the bit where uh, we have the thing where he has like his uh, French nanny tutor. Yeah, he's and, got the French nanny tutor. He's not paying attention. And, and then and the kid that's playing uh, the role, he's like been encouraged to do a kind of a James Cagney impression, which is pretty okay. Because like, I yeah. mean, I mean, at that point, it's like, well, it's before James Cagney was a thing, but this kid's like, nah, see, <laughs> well, that's more of a Edward G. Robinson, but. Believe me, he's he's trying to be Cagney. He's trying. He's trying. But that's that's a yeah. that's a lofty goal to aim for, though. I mean, Cagney was the was a pretty pretty big deal, pretty good actor to be trying to emanate back in 1943. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think that was cool. Um, no, it's. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good stuff here, like in it. Um, the dialogue and the way the characters kind of work together is good, but I am. I know this is something people are going to be like, oh, get over it, man. It's like I do I, – I don't care about these rich people and their lives. And it's like, yes, I know this movie is 80 years old. I, I, I understand. But in our current current world, it's just like – it's like I don't want to see a couple old white people yelling at this black guy. Like I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, the problems I have with it are – small or like they're they're not that big it's just like i didn't really like that stuff and you you do kind of get you it gets a little bit tiresome watching like rich people just being like man what are we gonna do with all our time and you're just like oh yeah that's we have no struggles whatsoever (laughs) yeah there's just like the only thing we care about is what we're having for dinner and you go okay meanwhile overseas (laughs) it's like Let's take a look at the ghetto. <laughs> let's let's talk about camp. It's like I don't know. Anyway, that's a little bit heavy handed, perhaps. But this movie is like, oh, rich people. Yeah, isn't and... that great? Yeah, ideologically, this movie is. Pr- uh, you know, there's a word for it. Hmm. I can't Does put it my... start with a P. <sighs> yeah, P something. I don't know. It'll come to me later. Peener. Um, <laughs> Peener. Is that what it is? Penis. Yeah. But, well, I mean, like, that's what I mean, to. It's like, I get it. This is an 80-year-old movie. I, I understand. It's just... 
Well, I mean, I fuck. I mean, I don't, is that a, that's not even. A, I don't even know if that's an excuse, right? Because it's like, yeah, sure. It was like yeah. a mode of the time of like this. It's a congratulations to somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I saw the movie. It's been very was very popular. I mean, I guess people were like, I want to see what success looks like, so I know what to measure myself up to. One day I'll be in the big house that I just am yeah. born into. Like you just get it. You just like you don't have to do any work for it. It's just kind of like You're handed to you. And I guess the idea is like, see. But then you get to go into heaven anyway. I'm like, again, there's no repercussions for anything anybody does. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, like there's no uh, conflict in most of this yeah. film. Like other than, oh, my wife left me, but not really kind of. And then there's like a whole convincing bit. And mm-hmm. it's like him like stalking around because you can just tr- like afford to hop on an airplane and f- track your wife down and like watch her from the bushes again. Very good. Uh, again. Very good behavior. Yeah, that, that's the other thing we we. I mean, I know you talked about it, but uh, the uh, the stalker uh, part of this, uh, where he's just very willing himself upon his wife and saying, "You're gonna love me. I know you will." And then you go, "Dude, just get like I don't know, get a computer, get Reddit. You're gonna be fine. You don't need you don't need this." Yeah. Uh, well, I just looked too because I was like, because I was like, "Well, the movie's 80 years old." And then you're like, "Is that an excuse?" And then I looked. I was like, "Well, when did Lady Eve come out?" And Lady Eve came out three years before this movie came out. Yeah. And I mean, that's got like, like Lady, um, it's got a little H- bit H- in Henry, there, but Henry, not as much. Well, Henry Fawn is a total schmohawk, right? Yeah, he's a, he's a goon, but but it's like, but he's a hapless goofball. And then there's like, he's getting worked by the con woman, and it's like, yeah, I like that movie's awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, I also like. I mean, I probably liked Heaven Can Wait as much as I like My Man Godfrey. I thought they're they're kind of operating at the same level for me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, yeah, ideologically, maybe uh, bankrupt. <laughs> what else to say yeah. about it? It's like kind of like oh, like I don't really agree with these movies, but I can watch them and be like, oh, it's a charming movie. Exactly. It's just like, little, that, just that's maybe I mean, maybe too. it's just vile. <laughs> Well, and yeah, that's exactly kind of what I I was trying to get at too. I was like, I think it's cute. It's mm-hmm. definitely a cute movie, but like, it's cute enough. It's cute mm-hmm. enough. Well, because you know, because uh, what do you have? Citizen Kane two years earlier, the old, old Kanester, mm-hmm. and in this movie, it's like, yeah, he's a rich piece of shit, and like you see, like the the damage he does, things don't work out well for him. Like there's like there's an actual conflict he loses rather mm-hmm. than things just keep working out well for me. And it's not like trying to say anything about that. It's kind of like, that's the way it should be. And you're like, oh, that's bullshit. That's, and then that's, you go, because that's what, it? Because that's like, I don't know, it's, it, that's the feeling that uh, I kind of was left thinking about the entire time, which I don't know if was the way that people thought about this in 1943. Or, mm. I mean, I'm sure uh, a communist watching this movie would be like fucking hating on this they probably like this is shit um maybe so i mean that's like 80 years ago and they were like oh fuck this movie they probably would like absolutely hate it <laughs> so yeah yeah they'd laugh at it being like this is like every, this is this lubich touch <laughs> i don't know what he's touching but i don't want to i don't want to eat it after he's touched uh, it. Uh, it's a rotting touch does d- d- does touch. does d3 damage wow yeah huge Huge. That's huge if true. Huge if true. Uh, you want to hear about people who hate this movie? Maybe they're yeah. com. Maybe they're communists. I mean, yeah. Let's bring on the commies. Yeah, bring them on. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got Mitch T. Mitch T. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've yet to meet a communist named Mitch, so we'll see what this guy's got in store Could be for a first. us. All right. <sighs> I understand that we should be looking at older films like these as a product of their times, and so we should overlook contemporary sexism and racism and focus on the other qualities of the work. But this film makes that fucking hard. It actually Whoa. feels repulsive, especially with how these constant moments are passed by as if they were nothing. Despite its smaller attempt at comedy, how obscenely dull the plot is along with these other attributes are so insufferable that this disc has earned its place next to cuck in my box of movies not worth rewatching. Fuck. RJ, uh, you need to look this up. I did like the opening scene, but it was all downhill from there. The fact that this movie has a rating above a 2 out of 5 confuses the hell out of me. Okay, wait, what did you want me to look up? Uh, cuck. <laughs> oh, the word cuck? It's a movie. It's apparently a oh, movie. Oh, a movie? Yeah. I mean... 
I'm sure it's I, a I, I, movie I, to someone. Well, it came out last year, 2019. And there's something. Oh, there's, there's another thing called Cuck Do, Cuck Raw. Oh yeah, I kind of from remember. Rob Lambert. I okay, so yeah. Ronnie is a young white man struggling with the pressures of life. He's unemployed, rejected from the military for being mentally unstable, and lives at home with his alien and nagging mother. Roni finds an outlet for, uh, for his frustration online. The alt right community gives him a place to belong and absolves his personal responsibility. Wow. Oh, fuck him, the reviews. Oh, boy. Oh, this, this is my is... Black Panther. <laughs> this movie... Okay. Oh, okay like... Yeah, we can't go down that train. Donald Trump's name is never uttered. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I feel like somebody... I don't know. I feel like someone might have mentioned this to us. Or something the equivalent to, or someone... It's probably Oliver Granger. No, no. No, he didn't bring up Cuck? I don't think so. Someone this, this this seems familiar. Well, Mitch um, seems like a cock. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I mean, uh, as they, a, they, not, but but definitely not a communist. Not a communist. No, th- this person honestly, they don't really have a whole lot of movies logged. Uh, they only have three favorite films, not four. The Blue, Mahalan Drive, and The Lighthouse. Mm. So it's like all right, but th- the only other like half star films they have, it's just DC films. <laughs> Like Justice League, Suicide Squad, and uh, Heaven Can Wait. So, okay. okay, that's it. They don't don't have a lot of movies logged. Okay, next up we got Andre Ortez Sedano, one okay. star. Approaching these films with an open mind in this day and age is difficult to begin with, so the obvious anachronisms weigh heavier. In this case, it was especially difficult to obviate them. The main character was obnoxious, and the whole story was just misogynistic, spelled wrong, and dull. I mean, I, I feel it's like, like this miso, misogynistic. Misogynistic? I feel like this person's picking uh, problems with, with movies that they don't like, but not with movies that they do like. And that sounds dumb, but uh, they they five-starred Salo. Salo. So it's just like, does that movie not have problematic things uh no i mean so from a, the subject I mean, matter of it it doesn't but yeah the way it makes you feel it might be hard to avoid that i that think this be. this this movie is about what it makes you think about because you go how is it how can you get over get past this yeah because uh, it, it came to my mind and the, the fact that you're thinking the same thing it's like hmm yeah so here you want to hear this guy's favorite movies yes La Floor from 2018. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, who doesn't? That's, that's, that sounds uh, like some slow cinema to me. Oh, you want to hear slow cinema? What about Santan Dango? Slow as molasses. What about Come and See? Ooh, yeah. That's 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 that's, that's the Festa first date movie. Say, hey, yeah. baby, you want to come and see? Come, come and, and see. see. And then uh, Belladonna of Sadness, which. I mean, yeah, just... that's. I mean, that's about uh, menstruating witch revenge, and it's it's, it's pretty cool. It's about something. Uh, this person's also also just five starred uh, an elephant sitting still. So I, th- I feel I've like heard that's good a things. slow film. I mean, I like all these movies. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I think I mean or the ones I've seen, I like all of those. So like, yep. I get it. Um, I, th- these things I don't object to as much, though. I suppose, but this, this that's is just a big criteria. That, but that RJ <laughs> is my privilege. Oh, <laughs> as a host of a podcast, or and wealthy as shit. <laughs> shit. How, how else can I sit around and podcast for three hours without any regard Weekly. for the outside world? Every week, watching Weekly. suffering for my art, watching a Criterion film or three a week. <laughs> I mean, one day you're gonna get yours, O'Doyle. One you're gonna get days. yours one of these days. Finally, one and a half stars from Errol. Errol. Oh, I see. I disagree. If there's heaven and hell, the latter is where Henry Van Cleve would definitely go. I mean, that's the point, dude. 
I looked. Was that the? Whole, oh. I looked forward to the depiction of the concept of after death, and the Technicolor production was really pretty. But apart from that, I seriously did not find anything else worth my time. And man, I'm pretty forgiving of the foolishly fast-paced romance portrayed during those days because I'm a dumb, hopeless romantic. But Henry and Martha's love story was so insufferable. I won't. I want even talk about it any further. I just finished the entire thing because I kept hoping something was worth all the high ratings on here. Nah, I'm disappointed. Here's uh, Errol's bio. My opinions do not have any value. I forget everything after a week. Hey, I mean, that sounds like you. I mean, it's, yeah, it is. Favorite films uh, from the romantic include Vivacious Lady uh, from 1938 with uh, your buddy Jimmy Stewart and Ginger Rogers. Jewel Robbery from 1932, William Powell, K. Francis. Now, Voyager from 1942, the uh, prequel to the Star Trek Voyager show. And Stardust, the Neil Gaiman film. Out of nowhere, starring Robert De Niro. Stardust. <laughs> Out of nowhere, surprising everyone. Out of nowhere with the chair. But, uh, I mean, this person... They do watch, like, this is all the kinds of movies they watch. is like, 40s and uh, 50s stuff, it looks like. so. Real grandpa. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm, they're playing to their type. That's cool. Well, it's getting late, well, RJ. Hey, yeah, let's pull, let's pull the pin. Any final words here on Heaven Can Wait? Mm, I can't wait to get out of here. Life here? Yes. <laughs> After the break, uh-huh. um, RJ and I take an elevator. Two? Well, maybe the elevator's broken. Instead, we take a stairway to heaven.